All right, in this PowerPoint, we're going to talk about uh, the physical, physical geography of East Africa. And I kind of feel like the uh, physical geography we're going to talk about here is some of the more interesting uh, and maybe familiar to you. Even if you don't know the terms, there's a couple of words we're going to use I'm sure that you've heard of before. So driving question, what you think about the positive and negative effects of East Africa's physical geography? I know I misspelled physical up there. I'll have to fix that a little bit later on. Uh, so jumping in here, you can see these are the countries that kind of define uh, East Africa. Um, a pretty large area. Some of these areas you probably have heard of before, such as uh, Kenya, maybe a country that you've heard of before, uh, the Sudan up here, uh, maybe even Tanzania down here at the bottom, or Somalia might be areas that you've heard of in um, just outside of social studies. Um, these uh, four countries, Eritrea, Djibouti, is how you pronounce that one, kids always laugh, haha, -ha, I know, Djibouti, funny, and then Somalia and Ethiopia make up what is called the Horn of Africa, it really does look like a horn, I almost think Africa, if you turn it, kind of looks a little bit more like a rhino, and you probably are familiar with rhinos live in, uh, in Africa, even in some of these places that we're going to be talking about. Um, so one of the things that's really unique, this is a video that you can watch a little bit later on, is the Great Rift Valley. It is the largest rift valley in the world. Um, think of a rift valley as a giant scar uh, in the earth. It's uh, kind of, it's not really like the Grand Canyon, it's different than that. Um, there's not a lot of other rift valleys that I can compare it to, uh, certainly here in the United States. Um, but the Great Rift Valley is this gigantic kind of uh, uh, crack. Uh, that spans throughout a lot of East Africa, and so it's a it's the largest one in the world, uh, and it makes um, the geography pretty unique in this area. So that would definitely be a term I want you to know. There's kind of like an aerial uh, view of it, uh, probably from a satellite. Um, this picture probably doesn't do it justice how big it actually is. Um, so it's massive. Uh, it says here even that East Africa used to be connected to the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, but it's now separated by the Red Sea. Um, probably have heard of Pangaea at one time. All the continents were connected together, and then they drifted slowly apart. So uh, that would have been during that time that that's when that happened. They were uh, connected together at that point. Um, not really sure there's too much I want to talk about here. Um, the eastern and western parts of the Rift Valley kind of break um, uh, this area into two kind of... Uh, Climates, eastern, um, in the areas like Ethiopia, it's hot and dry, whereas western uh, is, a, is much more, um, uh, reserve the sees more rainfall, uh, and even jungles and things like that might be common in those areas. So uh, this, uh, this video here that you can watch if you actually get into the PowerPoint is about Kilimanjaro. Uh, it's an IMAX video. Uh, Kilimanjaro is a dormant volcano. It is the highest peak in Africa, standing 19,341 feet tall. Um, many people try to climb it. Uh, we might talk about that in class a little bit. Um, I even know uh, people here in Ellisville. I know I had a former neighbor uh, that was interested in climbing it. I think he's actually going to do that this coming October. Um, it's not like climbing Mount Everest. It is more just like a long hike. It does take several days. Um, and notice something kind of weird about this picture is that there is snow. Um, snow is not very common in Africa, but it is common on Kilimanjaro most of the year because it is so high up in elevation. At 19,000 feet, the temperature up there would be very cold. So um, if you would be a person that would hike this, you would be you know, experiencing much warmer conditions uh, in the valley than you would be on the mountain. Um, so, and I like this picture too because it shows the, uh, you know, the giraffe, a very common animal in Africa, but something that wouldn't exist up into in the snow areas of the mountains. So um, that is definitely a feature I want you to know about, Kilimanjaro, that's in East uh, Africa. Um, but this is kind of more what is uh, kind of familiar to most people of East Africa, is these deserts, uh, semi-arid areas, and then savannas where, um, you know, there, it's, not a, it's not a jungle. Um, and this is kind of where you would find animals like elephants and rhinos and giraffes and places like that. Um, another area is the Serengeti, some place you probably have heard of before. Um, it's located mainly in Tanzania and Kenya. It's a plain. 
Uh, so it's a very flat area of land, and it's home to the, one of the largest migrations on Earth. So the Serengeti migration of uh, animals like wildebeest, gazelles, zebras, and buffaloes, and there's tons of them that gather uh, for this migration. This video kind of deals with that, so you might want to check that out a little bit later. Um, this is kind of a little bit more about that. I'm going to skip past that. Um, there are mountains in the area, certainly in places like the Congo, which is kind of more central Africa. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, and then Rwanda has some mountains in it as well. Um, the Nile River, we've already talked about it, it is the longest river in the world, even flows into East Africa. It's not just contained in North Africa. Um, so it flows all the way into Lake Victoria, um, which is the largest lake in Africa. So we kind of discussed that here. Um, you can kind of see there's even some swampy areas that exist. Um, that's not something that I would really say is like a, a really key detail uh, of this part. And then I want to talk about Lake Victoria here, which is the largest lake in Africa. It's named after Queen Victoria of England. Um, it's not the only thing in Africa named after Victoria. In fact, there's lots of things uh, even in Canada and in Australia that are named after the same queen. Um, so she reigned for a really long time, uh, and so lots of things got named after her. Um, it's not really a very deep lake when you compare it to some of the other uh, freshwater lakes from around the world, but it is uh, very big. It's very noticeable on the map. And this is where um, uh, the Nile River starts. So the Nile River is interesting because it flows um, south to north. Um, which might seem weird, but it's all due to elevation. It's higher in elevation uh, around Lake Victoria, so it flows uh, towards um, the Mediterranean Sea, whereas compared to something like the Mississippi that's a long lake here in the United States, it flows the other way. It flows north to south. So definitely want you to know about Lake Victoria. This is Lake Tanganyika. Uh, it's another uh, lake. It's, a long, it's a, the longest lake. Um, and it's the second deepest in the world. Um, I can't remember how deep it is. Um, maybe somewhere around 800 feet deep uh, at its deepest po uh, point. So um, kind of really interesting. It's the way it's formed uh, that makes it uh, so deep. Um, so kind of another interesting. But Lake Victoria is kind of the most important part there. So uh, definitely, as you're talking about, you know, the Mount Kilimanjaro, uh, there's a lot of uh, climate types here, everything from like more of the savanna, grassland areas to even into more of the deserts that you might get up into in like the Sudan. Um, there is seasonal rainfall in most places. Um, I would classify like a savanna as a tropical wet dry climate where there is a wet season and a dry season. Uh, all the rain would kind of fall during the wet season. Um, and then there can be severe drought during those dry seasons. There was a severe drought in East Africa in 2011. Uh, when there is drought, often food is in very, very short supply, which might lead people to do um, other things. We'll talk about in uh, the next video, Somalia and its history of uh, piracy, pirates. Uh, even today in uh, um, Somalia and other, some of these other countries are pretty common. So kind of moving on here, uh, one of the other things that we wanted to talk about is desertification. Desertification is the expanding of the desert, mainly the Sahara, pushing um, uh, from north, moving further south, uh, especially as land is cleared. Uh, when trees are taken away, that kind of gives the desert uh, more of an expanse. Um, so a lot of ways they're trying to overcome this is to plant uh, new trees and new plants to try to keep... Um, the desert from expanding. You wouldn't think of a desert really expanding, um, but it, it, the trees and the vegetation help uh, to keep the desert kind of where it's supposed to be. Um, so uh, another kind of important word here, word here is the Sahil, which is the edge of the Sahara, and that's kind of what the southern part of the Sahara is what's expanding further south and, and getting into these areas that were not desert before. So this is a good video to watch that kind of talks about that. Um, so you can kind of see that here in between these red lines is that's kind of that, this area that's plagued by that desertification. Um, uh, and this is that, yeah, so this kind of, you can kind of see what's going on here uh, with desertification. So a term that I want you to know, it's really a serious problem in um, uh, East Africa. Uh, there are a lot of resources. Um, not sure if you can kind of know what's going on in this picture. It almost looks like snow, but that's actually salt. 
Uh, so mining of salt is a pretty common resource. There's other resources as well, but um, salt is something that uh, Africa has used for a long period of time to trade. Um, so you can see some other resources listed there. That's another video here that talks about the Great Rift Valley and some of the resources in the area. Um, there are some supplies of coal and petroleum, and they do use hydroelectric power uh, mainly from the Nile. Um, so there's other energy sources out there as well. So um, one of the last things we'll talk about here is that um, safaris uh, that exist in like the Ser Serengeti and places like Kenya are really important for the economy. So um, obviously uh, that raises um, money for the economy and improves uh, conditions there. So kind of question I'll, and we might explore a little bit in classes how expensive do you think it would be to go on a safari? Do you think that would be you know pretty affordable for an American or even affordable for the local people or do you think it would just be very very expensive? So uh, hopefully you can kind of answer our driving questions the positive ways that the climate and the physical geography has affected the people in this region.